In this video, we're going to cover setting up your chart of accounts in QuickBooks. Your chart of accounts is obviously important for doing your end of year statements, your profit and loss statement, but your chart of accounts can also be used for all kinds of good information while you're running the business to let you know how things are going. Think of it as a scoreboard for your company and you can compare it with your budget if it's set up right. So in this video, we're going to talk about setting it up right. We will start though by reminding you that this video is meant for educational purposes only. And we seriously recommend you consult a financial professional before you make any changes to your account. All right, let's dive in. We'll start with the best practice. The best practice for going through these videos and setting up your QuickBooks is to watch all the videos all the way through, and then go back and set up your QuickBooks. If you try to set things up as you go, you may realize down the line that you wish you set up something differently to get a report a certain way, etc. So you can just recommend you watch everything first, then you can go back and sort of set it up once you kind of see how things are going to go through. So why most contractors can't use their QuickBooks or their accounting for good information? It's often because there's a big disconnect between the contractor and the accountant. The contractor typically doesn't have an accounting background and the accountant, again, typically doesn't know anything about contracting. So the accountant sets up your books for taxes and the contractor doesn't understand where the money's going or what account it's going into. Well, it's all kind of like handing over a bunch of receipts to somebody in accounting. They enter it. And then there's numbers in accounting, but the owner doesn't really trust the numbers. They don't know what is where. And therefore, really, your accounting gives you what you did at the end of the year and not much more in between. And often that's because accounts are set up in the wrong spot, if you really want to use your accounting accurately. Expenses are entered incorrectly, and that's not to blame the bookkeeper or the accountant. They get the involved in the job at all. So they're taking these receipts with very little information, even if they get the receipts in many cases, and they put it in the account that they think is best. But again, without them being involved in the job or the way the job was sold or the way it was estimated, it's very hard for an accountant to put it in the right spot just by guessing. And because they guess, the owner's then unsure where expenses are getting entered. And because they're unsure where expenses are, they don't really trust or use the reports. And therefore, you've got this accounting, which is supposed to have great information about your business and statistics and where your money's going, and nobody really trusts it, especially the owner. And it can't be used for what it's most supposed to be used for, which is to help you improve your business. Your end of year statement is something you want to do for taxes or whatever, but really, your accounting should be used to help you run your business more profitably. And that's where we want to help you get to. So we'll take a quick look at the order of setup now. Typically, you'd start setting up your accounting with the chart of accounts. That's going to be your foundation for everything. Report is going to dictate where also this eventually ends up when you do your P&L or your company-wide reporting. In QuickBooks, there's also this thing called service items. Now, service items link to chart of accounts. So you can use service items when you do transactions, and the service item will dictate what chart of account that the money ends up into. So a service item, for example, could be linked to in a material expense account. When I'm doing a vendor invoice, instead of booking it directly to the material expense account, I can book it to a service item. That service item will tell QuickBooks what chart of accounts to use, but it'll also give us another layer of reporting. So you might ask, well, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just book it right to the chart of account? Well, what you can use service items for is to break your company down on a little more detail. Your chart of accounts can be a company-wide set of revenue and expenses. Your service items, for example, could be used to break up your expenses, say, by division. So, for example, you could have one material expense account that would show up in your chart of accounts in your end-of-year reporting, and all your materials would go into material expenses. But if you wanted to see how much materials install division used versus your maintenance division versus your enhancement division or any other division you may have, you could create three service items. Each one of those three could still link to your company-wide material expense account, but then you could do reporting on those service items to see how much did we spend on materials in each division or department. So service items actually allow us to do more detailed reporting, but the money still ends up in the right places in your chart of accounts. Next up, you have transactions. Transactions reference chart of accounts, or they can reference service items, and that's what we were getting to before. You might find it more valuable to have your transactions reference service items. That way you can get more detailed reporting. So when you sell stuff on customer invoices or when you book 
uh, things like vendor invoices or subcontractor invoices, or even timesheets. Those things can link to service items, and the service items will allow us to get reporting at a more detailed level. And then finally, of course, you've got reports. And you will find that if you use QuickBooks job costing, many of the reports are driven by service items, which is again why we're recommending you set those up. And we'll cover those in a later video. This is the chart of accounts video. We'll talk about service items later, but for now, I wanted to give you a lay of the land and why we might be recommending a more simplified chart of accounts than you might otherwise be expecting. All right, one of the biggest problems with chart of accounts in contractors is that overhead and cost of goods sold have not been set up correctly. So if you're gonna look at your profit and loss statement out of QuickBooks, you're gonna see three main sections. There's gonna be revenue, there's gonna be cost of goods sold, and then there's gonna be operating expenses. And really that for us means revenue is sales, cost of goods sold is your job costs, and operating expenses is your overhead costs. The problem with how a lot of contractors books have been set up is that there are job costs in the overhead section and there are overhead costs in the job cost section because it wasn't clearly understood where things should go. And again, there's a disconnect between accounting and the business owner. The business owner doesn't necessarily understand accounting at a deep level. And the accountant has never estimated a job for the contractor, so they don't understand where things should go and you get this mismatch. You can fix all that with one very simple rule of thumb. Your job costs, the things that are in your cost of goods sold, are costs that you estimate. So things that you estimate, like materials, like your crew labor, like equipment rentals, all these things should be in your job cost section. Or as QuickBooks calls it, your cost of goods sold. Anything that you don't estimate should be in your overhead cost section. Those are all costs that haven't been recovered in estimates. And the reason is quite simple. When we need to recover a cost, when we quote it to a customer, we're going to either recover that cost in the estimate, or it has to be recovered as part of our overhead markup. There's no other way to recover a cost. You really only have two options when you're bidding a job to a customer. It's either a line item that you've used to calculate the bid, or it's part of your markups that you use when you mark up your cost to get to your final price. And if it's not in either of those, you're going to miss it. So it's really important to look at this. And it's really important to take a good look at your company and realize that for many things, you may actually need to put them in a different spot, i.e. move rentals from overhead to job costs, as an example. You may also need to split things. Payroll is an excellent example for this. There's lots of people in your company that work only in the field, your crews, for instance. So their payroll cost should be a job cost or cost of goods sold. But people in the office, like your accountant, your HR person, your office admin, you never estimate those people. And because of that, they need to go in your overhead cost. Their wages need to be part of the markups that you add to charge your customers correctly on your estimates. So take a look at your job costs or your chart of accounts right now and make sure that you've got things in the right places. And as we mentioned, some things you may need to split into two. You likely need two sets of payroll, one in your job costs, and one in your overhead costs to make sure everybody's getting allocated and recovered correctly. Finally, we strongly recommend you keep everything simple. The more complicated you make your chart of accounts, and most companies do it in their best interest. They think that by getting a detailed chart of accounts, they're gonna get really good information about their company. The truth is, it's gonna make it so complicated that you're probably not gonna trust any of your numbers. Stuff's gonna get in the wrong places, and then you don't believe everything. Sometimes less is more. And in the case of landscape accounting, it's probably true. Remember, most of your important job costing is gonna come from the field. Labor is probably the single biggest factor in making or losing money. And we have problems just getting a date on a timesheet, much less the right job, the right cost code, the right task, or the right hours. So keep things as simple as you can. Things that are simple tend to be more accurate, more trustworthy, more useful, and if you decide later you, know, you want to get a little more detailed, it's a lot easier to expand or get more detailed later than it is to try to simplify later. Once it's complicated, it's hard to roll back. So here's a, just a brief overview of what things are going to look like as you finish this. You're going to have transactions like estimates, invoices, payroll, or vendor invoices. Those transactions, instead of referencing your chart of accounts directly, are going to reference service items. And your service items might for you represent divisions. So for example, your install division, your maintenance division, and your irrigation division. 
Those service items are also all going to be linked to individual chart of accounts. And the chart of accounts is going to be where you're ultimately your revenue, your job costs, your overhead, and your profit show up in your company reporting. So jobs are going to reference transactions. Your divisions inside your company, your departments, are going to represent service items. And then your company as a whole will be represented by your chart of accounts. Now, moving forward, have a look at your chart of accounts. Decide what needs to go where. Make sure you've got things in the right places and you're ready to move forward. But again, we recommend you watch the rest of the videos before you actually make any changes. And if you're stuck or you wish you had more help, we've got samples. In fact, if you look at our GoLMN slash help and do a search on sample chart of accounts, you'll find a sample chart of accounts that you can look at as a template for setting up your own. Or even better, we have an Excel file that you can actually import right into QuickBooks if you're starting a new QuickBooks file to set up your chart of accounts for you. Again, remember these are recommendations and we strongly recommend that you consult a financial professional before you make any significant changes to your accounting. And if you've got help, we're here for that as well. Either sign on to our live chat, go to goelmn.com slash help, or email us at advice at goelmn.com. We'll give you the best advice we possibly can. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.